Relaxation is defined in the system as controlling the flow of muscular energy and only using necessary muscles to fulfill a particular act or physical action on stage. So normally we think of relaxation as just being completely without any tension at all, and certainly it is, and we use those deep relaxation exercises to train the actor to become fully relaxed so that when you're on stage, you can concentrate and focus on what you need to do. And that's certainly a very important element. The control of muscular energy, Stanislavski also borrowed from Raja Yoga, which basically teaches that the thought, the breath, and movement are all one within the body and that we can control that flow. The energy, the life force, is called prana. And the flow of that energy through control of the breath is called pranayana. Thus, we see these exercises in your in the asanas, the positions of yoga that we're all familiar with. However, what Stanislavski did was take the principles behind that, the scientific principles, and apply them to human behavior and action on stage. Relaxation and the control of the flow of muscular energy. Relaxation is the second major element of an action which is defined as a psychophysical act of human behavior. Our first controlling exercise is called finding and releasing tension, the use of pranayana. But before we do that, Let's remember that the meditative state of the previous exercises and recall that sensation in our bodies of calm and centeredness. And remember that meditation, focus and concentration of attention, will open up your intuition and lead you into a higher state of consciousness which will allow you to access artistic inspiration. Finding and releasing tension. Your objective is going to be to rise to a standing position. It's as simple as that. You can rise in any way which is comfortable for you. Listen to the instructions. You must constantly free up in the neck. You have to send thought and breath to the part of the body you wish to move in order to stand up because that will control the flow of muscular energy. All movements should begin from the base of the spine. That's very important for the later conditioning exercises. And your objective is simply to rise to a standing position. Before we do, however, let's go through the body and bring to consciousness its various muscle groups. Please tense your feet and inhale and hold one, two, three, four. Relax and exhale. And physically relax. So everything is psychophysical. I want to see it. The lower legs below the knees, the calves, inhale and tense. Hold two, three, four. Relax and exhale. Feel how the energy leaves. The tension leaves, you can feel it. Now the calf muscles, upper legs to the hips. Hold, inhale, two, three, four. Release and exhale. Now the hip region, buttocks and lower abdomen. Hold, two, three, four, release. Lower back, lower abdomen. Inhale, two, three, four. Release, two, three, four. Upper back, chest, torso. Inhale, two, three, four. Release, two, three, four. Shoulders, 
Inhale, tense, hold, two, three, four, release, two, three, four. Upper arms and biceps, inhale, two, three, four, release, two, three, four. Lower arms, inhale, tense, two, three, four, release, two, three, four. Hands and fingers, inhale, hold, two, three, four, release, two, three, four. Neck and throat, inhale, two, three, four, release, two, three, four. All the facial muscles, and if you can do it, even your scalp. <laughs> Inhale and hold. Two, three, four. Release and release the whole body and feel the energy. Just release everything. Feel the energy leaving your body. Now, any type of good relaxation exercise will work at this point. Now, the rising to a standing position. I want you to explore rising to a standing position with your inner controller. Sometimes I'll refer to it as the inner monitor. It is your, the eye of your mind, the point between your eyebrows, your third eye, whatever you want to call it. With your interior controller, I want you to observe which part of the muscles of your body you need to engage in order to come to a standing position. Thought, breath, movement. Moving from the base of the spine and keeping the neck free. In other words, don't lift yourself off the floor from your neck. Like a lot of people do, it's like a hook came along and picked them up by the neck because that's going to hurt your voice on, in acting. And even if you're acting for the camera, especially if you're acting for the camera, you have to be able to speak with a free throat so you don't have to strain. Okay? Very good. At will, whenever you wish to come up, begin from the base of the spine in thought and breath and explore, come up any way you choose. Just simply control the flow of muscular energy in your body through thought and breath. And take your time. There's no rush. See the muscles you're moving. And do it in your own time. If, if some people move faster than others, it's fine. But just make sure you do it honestly. And once you have that, reverse it and find an interesting way to lay back down on the floor, controlling the muscular energy. Muscle by muscle. Explore your movement, explore your body. That's what the whole purpose is. Use your inner mind, your inner controller, your inner eye to explore. And always try to do it a little differently until you can do it at a regular pace, at a regular tempo, and still be observing what's going on inside of you. Exercises in muscular energy are necessary because we need to become totally controlled over our entire body. It's our expressive instrument on stage. So exercises in muscular energy actually are psychophysical, meaning that by having a concentrated thought controlling the influx of air, the, in, the flow of air into the lungs, we then are able to control our movements and breathe and think simultaneously in a conscious manner. So the exercises are designed as conditioning exercises that condition the instrument of the actor over a period of time to behave organically on stage as the actor would behave in life. In other words, in life, you don't need any stimulus for action because there's stimulus all around you. It's personal to you. But on stage, it's artificial environment that doesn't exist. So we learn how to recreate this behavior in an organic way until we no longer have to think about it. Then we're able to select this behavior, controlling the thought, the breath, and the focus of movement towards specific objectives which are appropriate for the character we're portraying. If you'd all choose a partner, and if there's an extra person, they can 
observe. Okay, everybody choose a little partner, a partner to work with. Okay, and John, you can join one of the groups of two. Okay, okay, now listen very carefully. The second conditioning exercise is you're going to use your interior controller and your external controller. So let's say that Michelle is the initiator of the action. She's going to use her interior controller and observe herself. You're going to be partner B and you are going to use your eyes and observe her. So you're her external controller. Does that make sense? Okay, in this little improvisational exercise, Michelle is going to simply walk back and forth across the room as you normally would, and you're going to observe where you're grabbing in your body. Now, you are very fit, so you may not be grabbing anywhere. But that's good. Just to then observe the flow of muscular energy and how you're moving. So you're observing yourself with your inner controller. You're observing her with your external controller, but you're also watching where she might be grabbing. You're noticing how her feet move, how her legs move, her stance. You're looking at everything, okay? And you're going to, sh after a minute of doing this, repeat her movements and give her feedback and show her how she's walking, okay? Since we have to create every exercise from this point on has to deal with communion and communication and observation on stage. When we can observe ourselves in interior and external at the same time and everyone around us, including the theater, the technicians, the studio we're working in, the lighting, when we can have that consciousness, the audience, if we're acting live, or whatever, what do we call these two states of interior and external concentration? The dual or two perspectives, correct, John? And this is very important because it establishes that you are the actor creator and the actor character at the same time. And expanding your consciousness so that it's always aware of everything will actually give you presence, whether you're on stage or in front of a camera. If you try to block out, you will be putting up walls and your consciousness will not project or will not be picked up by a camera. You will be dead. You don't need to block out anything. You just need to be aware. Okay, keep expanding your consciousness. So that's the purpose of this exercise. And once again, it's based in what? In yoga. Okay, so you may begin. One of you is the internal, and one of you is the external viewer. And you just simply watch as you walk. Mm -hmm. And you can talk and give each other feedback. Mm -hmm. But just watch for a few moments at first and observe their walk because you're going to imitate it. Walk naturally in different tempos. Uh -huh. Just try different things. Maybe if, you've, if it helps you to focus on doing something, you can do that. Yeah, and take turns. Okay, good. Now, show, discuss, and tell your partner what you see and try to do it yourself if you're the external monitor. That does, that does catch it just a little bit. That's good, John. You caught it. So what did you observe, Mindy? Um, that carried a little heaviness in his shoulders mm -hmm. and a little, um, a little tightness in the hips. A little tightness in the hips. Yeah. Good. And does that help you? Was that true to what you experienced in yourself? It was. Those two didn't surprise me at all. The thing that was new to me, that was useful to me, is that I, my gaze was down. Oh. Rather than just level. Yeah. Good. The other, these two are not a surprise, and I didn't notice those as well. You know, in the theater, you have to think of your crown high, and if there's balconies, you send your voice up this way. So your gaze has to be level. It's because if you look like this, you're going to block off your throat. Of course, there are times when you have to. Right. But basically, it's always just intention, awareness, yeah. attention. Would you walk and let me see how you walk, and let me show, see how you imitated him? It's going to be different now. Okay, well, that's okay. 
but still there are hints of before. Yeah. I can, now let's see how you, what you observed in him. That's pretty good, huh? That little bit of roundedness in the shoulders is where you hold. Do you sit in a chair a lot in front of a computer? Um, some. But do you read? I do read. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I Readers, a lot, people who read a lot often are, are like this in their posture. I would lie down on the floor in the position that you saw with your knees and place maybe a cushion on your stomach sometimes and read like this and just think of your spine lengthening and widening. Then sit in a chair, a comfortable chair, and just think of the same thing. Okay. Because it will affect your ability to recall emotions without strain. Sure. Once we get to how physical actions stir emotions. Okay, uh, that, let's reverse now. So now the observer is the interior controller and the uh, inter external interior controller is now the external controller. And you can all do, you know, yeah, that's right. And give feedback and show them how they walked. Okay. And Kari Dodd, would you describe for us? We come over here, you three. What what um, what did you observe? Okay, so would you, would you, Jan, walk for us? Now he feels self-conscious, it's hard to do it. Uh, okay, good, good. good. <laughs> okay, and let's see how you imitated him. Yes, you notice when you were walk, when you're walking, how Jan had this little bit of a, a roll, yeah. and that, that comes from some kind of tension in the ankles. You want to lift your pants up just a little bit and walk? <laughs> so, I know it's, well, that's going to be silly how we can't really do that. But walk, walk, you will be able to see it. Walk, no, just walk, just walk normally. The I'll way, tell you for, the secret when you get done. Okay, see that? Mm -hmm. So there's some kind, there's something going on there physiologically. What is it, Jan? Um, I actually pulled the fascia from the bottom of my foot that I'm okay. therapy through. Oh, wow. I so understand I what that is. Okay, so it's interesting, isn't it, how everything is connected. By the way, the reason why it's important to be trained psychophysically is that at every moment you want to feel energy going from the top of your head. Well, actually, you feel it going from the balls of your feet to the top of your head. That's how you control inspiration, by controlling the flow of muscular energy in your body. At all times, you have that consciousness going on. Let, uh, let's see how John walked. Okay. John is pretty loose. He's, he's a languid kind of. He has a languid loose, and he's lost weight. I think you are. You're. Are you still doing your your uh, what is it called? Boxing. Boxing. <laughs> it's given you a lot of really lengthy strength because you're a lot looser, not as tight in your muscular structure as you were before. Mm. Uh, who was imitating him? Who was watching him? Or was it you? You both were. Well, Jan, let me see. What did you observe in him? You can tell, say as you do it. What would you it call has it? It kind of a dreamy quality. It does. It's a little dreamy, <laughs> languid, huh? Yeah. yeah. What did you observe in yourself? Um, that, well, comparing it to Jan, I, I realized that his, his energy is more up here and I'm, 
I don't know really where mine is. I just, uh, I just, I'm, I move a lot more. My arms and my legs both move, and his, his arms kind of stay still. Yeah, the architecture of our body determines our gait, our posture. And everything and it's one of the reasons why we don't get certain roles because we just don't look like it's the playwright or the director envisions the character we just physically and that there is physical limitation you know to what we can do but of course once you achieve plasticity you can do anything right John oh, yeah. that's right One example of a relaxation exercise which we use is called the marionette. Now, how we use the marionette is to really give an example to the actor of how he or she can control various parts of the body separately. In other words, energy doesn't always seem to flow logically from one part to the next. It can, but it can also jump to another part of the body based on stimulus, internal stimulus, or a stimulus from outside, from something we hear. See, we may turn real quickly or jump. So consequently, we want to have control over these quick changes also. And the marionette exercises allow us to step somewhat outside of ourself, as if there were a puppeteer above us pulling the strings, and we begin to be able to dissect movements. The dissection of movements is very important because when we go to build a character whose behavior is extremely different than our own, we have to dissect those movements into minute logical parts and then put them back together in much the same way an editor in a film or a director might take segments from different segments of the film and then put it together to create a new story. So the actor does with his mind, his images, and his body, and his voice and speech. So imagine you have a string, the marionette, and it's at the crown of your head, and, and he's, somebody's pulling it. But don't move it, your head until you feel them pull it or le let it go. So it's not coming from inside of you. Now we're going totally opposite of psychophysical. Very important for what style of acting, Caridad, to be acting from the, almost like you're being pulled by strings. And you're wearing a mask. What would that be? <laughs> Commedia dell'arte? Commedia dell'arte and classical Greek. Oh, really? You remember the exercises with the masks I do. and all the puppet things? Because yeah. they believed that the world was gods were controlling them. So their acting was very much like that. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, good. So you have that. You have a string on your jaw. It actually goes through the middle of your head into the jaw. I used to make marionettes. And somebody's pulling the string. But you can't speak. Good. You have a string in the middle of your back. And it can be lowered. There's one on your tailbone, which lowers you further. And it can pull you up or down. Now, in a marionette, there's no joints. They're just eye rings. They're like this. And so one is like that, and, and it screws into one part of the wood, and the other one's like this, and screws into the other. So what you have is this hanging. All the joints are always loose. That's why they look like this. They, don't ever be, they can't be like that. They just can't do it. So you will have strings on your elbows. Make sure you see the, el the string being pulled in your mind's eye first. You have a string on your knees and string on your hands. So this, actually you have a string on your wrist too, which raises your arm, and then a string on your hands, which moves it. So you have a string on your hands, your wrists, your elbows, middle back, lower back, tailbone, crown of the head, mouth, interior, your knees, and your feet. Now explore that a little bit, just explore that until you feel comfortable. But remember, every time you put your foot down, the joints have to give, because they're always loose. They're, they never, you can never put your foot down and just stop, or even if you're standing. So you, when you walk, there's always this little bounce of settling in. That's good, Jess. <coughs> what in the heck does this have to do with acting? <laughs> well, don't you sometimes feel like a puppet? <laughs>
That's good. If you really focus outside, your eyes will go blank. And that's what we want at this point. Even being outside your body is psychophysical. Even putting your attention on the puppeteer is psychophysical because you are creating it. You're giving your body a different set of muscular order, orders. Now, you want to do different things like bend over and pick up something imaginary. Explore which muscles do you need to do to do that. Engage only the necessary muscles. Now it becomes more psychophysical because we're adding thought. Which muscles do we need to do that? Only use the necessary muscles. Walk over and shake someone's hand. Or give them a hug as two puppets. Make sure you make eye contact. Your eyes can move too because they can pull those strings. <laughs> Don't get your strings messed up. <laughs> if you get your strings messed up, you've got to deal with that honestly as, the part, as an improv. <laughs> Okay. Choose a partner and dance with your partner. The fellows are going to run to the other side of the room. <laughs> you got ladies over here, guys. <laughs> oh, well, too bad. <laughs> it can be any kind of a dance you want. And coordinate your strings. <laughs> Everybody dance. Dance. No talking there, puppet. <laughs> you guys can't dance. You're trying to decide who's going to lead. That's <laughs> I love it. That's very good. OK, they're slow dancing from the 50s. We have the 70s over here. <laughs> And we got a, the lone guy in the corner, no one will dance with him. He's uncoordinated. <laughs> okay, good, rest. Well, the second exercise that we do is called the rag doll. Now, this rag doll is, exercise is purely about being totally in control of having no muscular tension at all in the body. The actor is hung up on a nail, a couple of his partners come and throw him down on the floor. He then is picked up like a rag doll and placed on the nail. But it teaches him to trust, first of all, his fellow actors, to trust himself, to slow his movements down so that they're in slow motion, and to think with his body as opposed to simply his mind. Imagine your body is made of rags. It's just all rags, raggedy Ann, raggedy Andy. Your body's made of rags, and you're hanging on a hook, so from the neck along the wall. So you go to Karidad, and what you're going to do is you're going to throw her on the floor. Now, you're not really. You're just going to pick her up from the hook, you know, and she has to do all the work. And then she's, you're just going to imagine in slow motion. In slow motion, Karidad, you're going to control the flow of muscular energy by only engaging necessary muscles and fall to the floor. You'll, and you're going to follow through. Then she's going to lie there for a moment, and you're going to help her pick up, but she's going to do all the work. You're just going to take her collar, you're going to like that, and she's going to reverse the movements at her own pace and tempo as if you were picking her up, and you're going to coordinate with her. You see? So that helps her, because we're going to do some reverse exercises later. Why don't you each choose a partner and do that, and then s switch with your partner. <laughs> Try to envision the image of yourself made of rags, and control the flow of muscular energy. Like Jan, you play, you tensed up your legs and got in position, you know, without and forgetting that they were just rags. Okay. So take your time and do it again. Okay. Now this is very important for acting teachers and directors to be able to see where you have tension in your body because you'll force emotions, you'll strain if you try, if you have tension. Oh, that's good, Jan, that's good. That's good. Did you all do it a few times? 
quick question. What do you observe in yourself? Reflect for a moment. Let's discuss it. What do you observe in yourself? So Jess, what did you observe? I observed in this exercise some of the things that Mindy pointed out before in an earlier one, or Melinda pointed out before in an earlier one. Um, and that is that I tend to carry tension in my traps and my shoulders. Also through my trunk, I also added, uh, there's a tiny bit of collapse hmm. in my legs here. Um, but, and for a guy who used to walk like this, you know, six or seven years ago, I now Oh yeah, like I this. can see the difference even, so, yeah. It's just an ongoing process. It's a lifelong study, really. Right, so it's right. more of hearing that. It's like a confirmation to me of, you know, it's well, still there. You're acting in New York now, right? I am. Okay, and you just, are you, did you finish the show that I you did? did? What was the name of the play? How I Learned to Drive. How I Learned to Drive. You did that too here in Los Angeles, didn't you? That's great. You played the same part, I believe. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's what a coincidence. Well, I'm a <laughs> yeah, I know it, the play is really heavy. <laughs> it's very interesting. What I want to suggest is there are wonderful Alexander teachers and Rolfers. Rolfing goes in and moves the fascia so that the muscles of the body can send a different signal to the brain and let go of those tensions. And I used to have terrible, terrible back problems. Just still do sometimes, but very minor. I did 17 sessions of Rolfing. Usually 10 will do it, but the older you get, the harder it is to correct those things. And also, Alexander Technique really also teaches you how to find the poise within your posture and release those tensions. So you might want to consider that when you go back, okay? Thank you very much.